Hello, I'm Dr. Andrew Neville. I specialize in treating adrenal fatigue and related chronic illnesses. And today I want to talk to you about uh, the chronic illnesses associated with ovarian hormone dysfunction and how that relates to adrenal fatigue because it might be different than what you've been told. Some ovarian problems, while they are a problem with the ovaries, they have a deeper, uh, a deeper cause. And when you fix that, you can see some ovarian issues go away. So a little endocrinology first, real quick, and then I'll, I'll make, some, make a connection. So there are three main hormone producing glands in the body, um, in, the, in the body here. We've got your adrenals, your thyroid, and your ovaries. Those three are controlled by two glands in your brain, your pituitary and your hypothalamus. Um, if you'll see some of my other videos, I've talked about the hormone side of your stress response system is your HPA axis, hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. Well, there's also an HPO axis and an HPT axis. Here's what happens. When your body is in fight or flight, for whatever reason, doesn't matter. Maybe it's a current stress. Maybe it's past stresses that have sensitized your limbic system. So your limbic system is over-interpreting your environment as stressful. Doesn't matter. Whenever your body is in that fight or flight, that stress physiology, cortisol and adrenaline go to the hypothalamic pituitary ovarian hormone axis and suppress it at every level it can. Hypothalamic stimulation of pituitary, suppressed. Pituitary stimulation of ovaries, suppressed. Ovarian production of estrogen, progesterone, suppressed. Suppressed. So what happens? Do that once in a while. It's life-saving. That's a... I mean, the body is designed to do that. Suppress ovarian function, don't really care about her periods, um, whether she ovulates or not. Not a good idea to think about procreation when you're running from a tiger. You'll be dead, right? So turn that off. Once in a while, life-saving, do it all the time. Now you're going to have some complications. What does that look like? Well, premenopausal complications are different than postmenopausal complications. The trend is towards estrogen dominance for a couple different reasons. And, and what that means is that estrogen is high relative to progesterone. It's basically estrogen dominance. What does estrogen do? Estrogen prolifer proliferates the uterine lining, helps it build up, right? So if you're estrogen dominant, you might build it up too much. So you might see heavier bleeding, um, crampier periods. Estrogen is associated with some emotional stuff as well. So, you know, a little emotional lability, worse PMS and moodiness and depression, um, you know, anxiety, sleep issues. Um, you know, PMS can be a really difficult time when that happens. Now, when you get a suppression, you're, you might be suppressing estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone, all three, but the progesterone tends to go below the estrogen. So you can still have low estrogen and be estrogen dominant related to progesterone, strangely enough. Um, the other connection is that the adrenals actually produce some of your ovarian hormones as well, primarily progesterone, testosterone, and then some estrogen. But when the body's in a stress response, it doesn't care about producing those hormones because those aren't going to help you fight the tiger. What fights, it, what fights the tiger with you is cortisol. So all the energy in the adrenals going towards cortisol, ignoring progesterone. Now your progesterone dips lower than your estrogen, ignoring testosterone. And then testosterone doesn't do what testosterone normally does, is it gives us vitality and stamina and libido, of course, as well, which is kind of why that takes a hit. Everybody's a little different, but primarily. So what does that lead to? What do my patients complain of when they come into me? Yeah, PMS for years. A number of patients will say, you know, my, all my hormone problems started, started with puberty. Right, started when I when I got my period. The onset of puberty is actually orchestrated by your adrenals. The first major hormonal change in the body since birth, but your adrenals mature first, release some hormone, primarily DHEA. DHEA goes to ovaries and testes, stimulates them to now mature. Right, major shifts, major challenges. But what if the adrenal issues or the adrenals are not so strong? Right, then it can be a little a little more challenging for sure. So we see PMS, we see periods that are uh, irregular, um, erratic, could be more frequent, could be less frequent. I mean, it can be a bit of a mess. All that crampiness, estrogen dominance stuff, which can lead to heavier periods. It can lead to um, uh, progesterone issues, ovarian cysts we'll see, 
even to the degree of fibroids, endometriosis, polycystic ovarian syndromes, kind of on the other side. It's so all this balance, you know, within the hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis pitched against the HPA axis, right? Now, postmenopausally, it leads to, you know, menopausal symptoms primarily, primarily. I've done another video talking about menopause, so I'll, I'll kind of leave that uh, for you to look at if that's, uh, if, if that's your thing. So you can fix ovarian hormone problems. I mean, I've, I've had young women not get their periods for years because their body is still is so stressed out, it's just suppressed it, right? No periods, fertility issues, miscarriages come about because of this. Postpartum depression comes about because of this. Now, the key here, right, is not to go crazy focusing on the systems that are suppressed when the body is stressed. Immune, digestive, reproductive, thyroid. It is almost a complete waste of time to do that. It's like the analogy I've given before. It's like trying to push a car that has the parking brake engaged because your body is purposely suppressing these. How about we fix that? You release that brake, allow the HPO axis to turn back on and re-regulate, magical things happen, magical things. The period normalizes, period returns, normalizes, quiets, less crampy. It happens, it absolutely happens. I've seen it hundreds and hundreds of times. Focus on the cause, focus on the cause. You can do a little treatment on this side, but focus on the cause and then eventually you don't have to do all that aggressive treatment um, you know, for ovarian hormone issues, okay? I hope this helps. Uh, any further questions, deeper explanation about adrenal fatigue or the connection with stress, these kinds of things, um, just click on the video in the links below. Uh, I wish you all the best.